So today I need to talk about the broker's exam. I just took it last week and I was able to pass the first time and I am so glad that I did because I'm now at 37 weeks pregnancy and I just wanted to take it and get it over with before I had the baby. Today I wanted to talk about some of the tips that I found helpful and hopefully this gives you more of an idea of what broker exam is like compared to the salesperson exam. Um, I was doing my own research before I took the exam, trying to find out how much harder is this exam compared to the salesperson exam, or like what are some of the sample questions, what are some differences. So my name is Rahel Choi. I am now an associate broker with eXp Realty, and I've been doing real estate for about four years, and this is my fourth year taking Finally, the broker's exam. Um, I took the course last year around March and I didn't take my exam until this year in January. So the way I studied. So number one was after I took the course, it, I had a long period of not studying. Um, so I went back and read through all the materials. Um, our, our real estate school gave us um, this booklet. And so it was like a study guide for me. And if your school has that, you should definitely review all the materials, go back to the sections that you don't fully understand. So that's what I did. I read through everything and bookmarked any places that I had trouble understanding. And then I went back again and studied again. Number two was learning concepts that I didn't understand through YouTube videos. I watch a lot of videos from prep agent, real estate wizard, exam cram. So that's what I did. I tried to understand all the concepts. And then number three was vocabularies and practice exams. So I set a goal for myself, like one day, day one, I would do 50 vocabs and 50 exam questions. So that while my mind was fresh on those vocabulary terms, that I was able to um, look for exam questions that questioned me on those vocab terms. So just knowing um, how the exam questions were phrased to ask me those vocab terms. And then last thing was, again, watching a lot and a lot of, lot of YouTube videos on all the practice exams because all these different um, teachers were giving different examples, different questions, and some of them were phrased differently or you know, they ask in many different ways to get to this one answer. So I think knowing how it's asked was really helpful for me to learn as well. And then lastly was PSI exam questions. I bought the package. I think it was just 30 or $40 and it had about 80 practice general exam questions for broker's exam. So that I knew it'll be similar to the exam that I'm taking. So that I probably took it three to four times and then went back and studied all the questions that were possible from that PSI exam. How hard was the test? I want to say it was pretty hard. What I did was from number one to 85, I went through it once um, really carefully and then bookmarked or marked every question that I wasn't 100% sure on. And then I took a bathroom break. <laughs> so with a fresher mind and empty bladder, um, I came back and went through all the exam questions that I had my doubts on. So I read through it again and picked the best answer possible. And I also tried to eliminate as much as possible so that I was picking it, picking the answer out of you know, the two possible answers. There were 85 questions on the national and there were 45 questions on the state portion. I know not all of them were counted towards my passing grade, but it was also comforting to know some of these would not count towards it. Some of the questions on the exam, um, the difference was compared to the salesperson, if I remember correctly, was that there were a lot more scenarios on the broker's exam, the national portion. Um, there were like a long paragraph of scenario, and then they'll ask me what the best choice is. 
out of like four or six answers. Some of the scenarios were a repeat, like later on, it'll ask me a different question with the same scenario. Um, but it was a lot of reading and a lot of concentration. So what I did was I used those orange, you know, spongy thing that blocks the noise. Um, so the noise cancellation really helped me to focus better when I was reading those exam questions. I think when it came to the test exam wording, it was similar to the PSI practice exams. So I highly recommend you buying those packages so that you get to know how the exam questions are phrased. And when it came to Massachusetts questions, there were a lot of questions like asking specific number of days are needed to, you know, do this or do that. And that one, <laughs> I struggled a little bit because I didn't really memorize um, those days, how many days were needed. So if you pay more attention to the numbers, I think that'll be helpful. And there was another question about landlord and tenant law from Massachusetts. There are actually a number of questions regarding that. So if you want to review that one more time before taking the exam, I think that would be helpful for Massachusetts state portion. The math questions, um, generally, it was pretty easy math questions. They had the amortization table and that was already on the desk and it's also on the screen. So know how to do that. And also calculating the assessed tax, how much you will be owing if your tax value is at this much. It wasn't like too complicated math questions on the exam. And then last thing was the agency questions. There were questions regarding the agency, what type of agency it is. But what tripped me was usually I see questions on more on the sellers, like what is the relationship with the seller and the agent in a scenario. But there were a lot of questions regarding the buyer side, like buyer and the agent relationship. Some of my tips for you is take your exam, take your time reading all the questions and mark any questions that you're not 100% sure. Come back to it and then just do your best choosing the best answer possible. Eliminate any answers that you know for sure is not the right answer and that'll help you narrow down the answer. Math questions. So personally, I love math and I knew it was something that I could get it right if I had studied everything and knew all the concepts. So the math questions were, it felt easier to me and it was those questions that I could get it right for sure. Um, so if you are good at math or if you want to be comfortable in math, just review all the concepts and different practice questions. You would know like what type of questions that they will ask you because they don't really go off from those practice exams that you do. That way you get one or two questions correct. And that could be the deciding factor that, you know, you could have passed or failed because of this math question. Um, so I really wanted to nail that down. And I don't know if I, you know, scored 70 exactly or 80, um, but I was so happy that I, I was able to pass the first time. It was a huge relief for me. And so the exam environment, just a little bit about it. In Boston, you have to street park. If you street park, you have to leave your phone in the car. And the building is pretty easy to locate. And it's on the third floor, I want to say. But they have signs everywhere. And they were pretty fast checking you in. Uh, making sure no, no time was wasted. And then I was able to take the exam, use bathroom breaks whenever I wanted to, needed to. They tell you right away on the screen whether you pass the exam or not, both sections, national and state. So that was really nice to just find out right away. And then after you're done, they take your picture again, take your payment, take your salesperson license and shred it and give you a new license. Um, so I hope this video will be helpful and good luck on your broker's exam. It is same material, same topics, but slightly harder, I wanna say, than the salesperson 
exam, but as long as you know your uh, materials and your vocabs, I think you'll be just fine um, taking the exam and make sure you practice a lot. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer any of these questions that you have. And I hope you pass the first time as well. And if you don't, just don't give up. It's fine. Um, everyone has their different style of taking the exam and studying. So, you know, it takes time, but you can do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.